Hey everyone, good morning. It's Anna Gibbs and this is your weekly dose of inspiration and mind stretching conversation, otherwise known as Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. So good to be back with you guys. I was not able to do a live session with you last week. I was traveling and um, I actually have some really great content from that that I'll be sharing in the next week or so. And today I wanted to talk to you uh, a little bit about your sense of curiosity. And um, I think that I've always been a believer of people, which is why I do what I do. And I've also been very naturally curious about people. And, you know, growth is, is the name of the game. Growth is always our objective. And one of the reasons why I wanted to create this community and share thoughts and ideas with you on this platform. And thanks for letting me be your coach every week. I appreciate that. And, you know, curiosity is so important to our growth because I think curiosity is what stimulates our growth, right? When we can ask powerful questions, we get powerful answers. And so uh, there's a quote from Einstein that says, all meaningful and lasting change starts first in our imagination. So I want you to take a moment right now and think about what you imagine, what you are naturally curious about, and how do you cultivate your curiosity? Because if we can cultivate our curiosity, can we stretch our thinking and can we grow by measures that will bring us closer to new opportunities, right? So curiosity is defined as a combination of intelligence, persistence, and a hunger for novelty, right? That's how we would describe, I should say, curiosity. It's a combination of intelligence, persistence, and a hunger for novelty all wrapped up into one. And so psychologists uh, do refer to curiosity as, as one of our traits, right? And so in, in our desire to know more, uh, in our quest to, to seek knowledge, we are opening ourselves up to more growth opportunities. And that brings us into new possibilities. So if you're taking notes, I would write that down. Right, curiosity leads us to opportunity, which can lead us to bigger possibilities. So why should we develop more of our curiosity? Well, I think it's because that is a, it's a catalyst, right? It's a catalyst for growth. And how do we do that? Well, number one, I think you have to be open and mindful to the, the energy of curiosity itself. I don't know if it's something we think about a lot, Right. So I think in this conversation this morning, I, I hoping that I am I'm kind of bringing this into your awareness. Right. So how can you connect more with your curiosity? Right. And how can you believe that this is something that you can develop and that there's a huge benefit for you to do so? I think some of us are naturally curious and others might need to develop this this trait. Right. So think about children. If you spent a lot of time around kids, uh, they are just naturally inquisitive and curious. Right. It's how we started our learning process. If, if we were not naturally curious, would we be able to learn how to speak and walk and, and, and uh, you know, discover things about the planet we live on, the cultures that we are part of, right? So it's part of our nature to be curious. I think somewhere along the way, we were um, conditioned to think differently. And even as young children, uh, you know, you might've been told, stop asking so many questions. So I'm here to encourage you to get back into that mindset, to start asking more questions and get naturally curious, right? Because that is how you open yourself up to possibilities. So have a beginner's mindset. Have a beginner's mindset. When you start out uh, to learn something new, you're a beginner, you're going to be naturally curious and ask a lot of questions. You're trying to gather as much data as possible. Well, what if you could start each day or, or move through your day that way too and have a beginner's mindset? Think like a child, right? Think with a sense of wonderment and ask great questions. Be okay with that also. I have to say for some of us, we might feel almost a little vulnerable. Um, you know, somewhere along the lines, we were programmed to think we're supposed to know it all and, and you don't need to know it all. You, you just need to be open to 
expansion, open to exploration, open to your curiosity and want to learn more. And, and if you don't walk into any day or situation thinking you know, that you have something to learn, you're gonna be closed off to those opportunities. So be okay with your vulnerability, be okay with needing to know, be okay with saying, I don't know it all. I think the most exciting place to be is a room full of people who know more than you do. What could you learn from that group, right? So that's a great opportunity. Okay, so make why one of your favorite words. <laughs> And, and be okay with asking why, right? It's not to be difficult. It's not to be challenging. Uh, it's about an approach to uncovering and learning more and, and be okay with that. Make that your favorite word, right? And, and I oftentimes will answer someone with, with a why question, right? So I just wanna say too, as, as a leader, as someone who is naturally curious, I also wanna naturally teach other people. So I might, I might uh, answer your question with a question too. And I might say something like, well, why is that important to you? And in asking you that question, I give you an opportunity to really think about it and pull it apart. And we can learn a lot more about your motive, your, your need to know, not just, you know, it's not just about needing to know, it's, it's why that's going to relate to whatever it is that you're doing, or what is the significance for you. I'm going to learn a lot more about you in that process. So, so using the word why more, I think can open up a lot of possibility. The other thing about developing or curating your curate your natural sense of curiosity is that we have to get comfortable and we have to stop looking for the right answers right we have to just be looking for information and and that information can take us to multiple the multiple places in our journey and so if we're looking for the right answer um you know or if we have that that mindset of well listen if it's not broken don't fix it um, we could be missing out on the opportunity to challenge ourselves to do things better, right? And so my word for 2022 is innovate. And innovate is always looking to take what is and expand it and make it better, create uh, solutions that are more efficient, more productive. And so if, we, if we're not naturally curious, if we have this mindset of, hey, listen, this has worked for us for a long time. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Then we're really missing out on new innovations. And I think that in today's world, there are so many opportunities and possibilities around how to do things differently, how to do things better, how to incorporate people and ideas and empower our, ourselves to, to want to collaborate with each other, that if we don't challenge the status quo, we miss out on all those, those ways to connect and learn from each other. So I think that's part of really being curious as well. Um, and again, don't be afraid to look wrong. Don't be afraid to look foolish. Don't be afraid, you know, to, to be um, shown that maybe your way wasn't the best way. It's okay, because that's how we grow and develop as well. So I think that it's better to look I'm going to just say in quotes wrong uh, than to look uninformed or to look closed off. Right. I would much rather have the opportunity to sit back and say, hey, you know what? That's a great idea. I never thought of it that way. Then for us to stunt our growth as a team or as a company um, and not see that there are other ways to to do things. So I think that's an important part of curiosity. Right now, I couldn't have this conversation unless I talk to you about abundance. See, if you're naturally curious, you're an abundant thinker right? Because you want to bring in other ways of thinking. You're, you're willing to ask questions. You are assuming that there's more than one way to do things. You're assuming that you have information and truth to uncover. And so in, in thinking abundantly, it's always about asking how. So write down that word, how. How can I? How can we? How is it possible? How could it be different, right? Opposed to being closed off and saying, 
can we do this or don't do that? I think asking those questions that start with how is opening up the dialogue, right? And that's what we want. We want to, we want to open up dialogue. We want to share ideas. We want to be prompted to research. We want to uh, be encouraged to collaborate. And, and that's why um, I think coming from a place of curiosity is naturally cultivating abundance, right? It's creating abundant thinking and it's giving us an opportunity to really connect, collaborate, and enjoy what we're doing at a higher level also. So as you are looking you know, to access more of your curiosity, I trust that this is inspiring some of you to really challenge yourself. And, and, and I would ask myself, just, just what I'm saying, ask myself questions. Do, do I come from a place of curiosity? Do I ask enough questions? Do I challenge the status quo? Am I comfortable with complacency? I think there's an opportunity here, right? And so as you are accessing more of your curiosity, where are you gonna focus some time and energy this week? So write down that question. As I access my curiosity, where do I wanna focus more of my time and energy this week? Put a little purpose to this, right? What area of your life would you like to get more curious? Where would you like to ask more questions? What would you like to know more about? Start with one area of your life and ask yourself where are you going to focus your time and energy this week? Adopt a beginner's mindset. Create abundant thinking. Ask questions that start with why and how. Make a list of, of things that are important to you in that one area and formulate a couple questions. Not, not a lot, just a couple. Then I would think about who in my life could I talk to? Who in my life could I bring into the conversation? Or what books should I look at or podcasts should I listen to? Like where, where are you gonna get some information? Where are you gonna get some data that will challenge your thinking in that one area, right? Just create a little, a little plan to this, a little purpose to this. Let me know in the chat or if you're with me on Zoom what your thoughts are, if you have any questions, of course. Um, and the, the, the last, hi, Jill, good morning. I see you coming off mute. Of Do course. Do I have your juices flowing? You have my juices flowing, darling. <laughs> this is wonderful. You know, I, I love the inspiration and the open-ended mindset because we run into so many people who I can hear it. We've never done this before. Oh, how can, and why should we? And so your creative thought process, you seem sometimes to be, you know, locked into somebody else's processes, but I like the fact where we can lead ourselves mm -hmm. through the system and also take responsibility for it as well. So right on. Yeah, for sure. And you know, something you just said sparked a thought, you know, as, as human beings, we are creative by nature. We are curious by nature, as I as I shared, you know, briefly in the beginning of, of our um, session here. If we weren't creative by nature, think about all the things that we currently do that we would never learn how to do, right? Because we are mo we model behavior. So if you are part of a team, a group, a company, whether it's you know something that you're doing professionally or in the community or socially, civically, if you show up more curious, willing to challenge the status quo. And, and here's the thing, you might find that in doing so that the way you've been doing it is the best way and that's great, but at least you know you've asked the questions. I will, I will say that most times you're probably gonna find some, some um, creativity and some innovation in asking the questions, right? But then you give everyone else in the group permission to do the same. I think sometimes we get stuck in a certain pattern Right there's there's so many positive things that can come from group dynamics, and then the other side of the coin is that we can also get stuck by modeling each other's behavior. So if you are the leader, or you show up as a leader anyway, right? Because we all have that potential to lead, and you start to raise some questions and and encourage people to get into conversation and collaborate, and you are empowering each other, 
you could see things really start to open up. So I think we have the power to, to model for others so that they can then follow you know, that lead and see that it's okay to ask questions. Um, you might assume that everyone's comfortable with the status quo, but they may not have any prompt uh, or real motivation to think differently until you raise those great questions. So that just came to mind by something you know, that you shared. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah. informal leadership takes a, it takes its place. And if you show up at a place that's been well established and you're the innovator, it does sort of rock the boat and it does cause others to pay attention and then something else might occur. So that's sort of the positive that, that usually unfolds. Yes, and I'll say um, that I don't, I don't think there's anything, I don't think there's such a thing as informal leadership, right? Well, we have to keep in mind there's a, there's a really big difference between leading and managing. And leadership is not about a title. Leadership is not that someone has given me permission to show up as a leader. Um, I think that true leadership is character and it's a, it's a certain level of influence. And so again, if we could all look at how to develop our influence, how we develop our ability to inspire each other, to empower each other, to collaborate and connect with each other, um, I think amazing things can happen in our groups. So just keep yeah. that in mind, you know, that yeah. you don't need that permission. Yeah, thanks for that footnote, because my my reference to informal leadership comes from a more bureaucratic pre presentation when you look yeah. at not for profits, for profits and structure and corporations. That's sort of the terminology that's used. But thank you for that other reference point. Yeah, you're welcome. And I think that in 2022, we have to we have to challenge that status quo, too, because I think there's a lot of opportunity to bring leadership into our groups, not man not management. So that's awesome. Um, well, so again, I trust that you are finding inspiration in this conversation because this is your one life to live. And so if we don't ask a lot of questions, are we missing out on so many great experiences? And I think that that's, that's really how this, you know, one of the points to sum up from this is that without asking all the great questions that can really cultivate our curiosity, we are really cutting ourselves off from deeper connections, more meaningful conversations, exciting experiences and, and opportunities to, to really innovate and to do things that uh, will move us forward and grow us, uh, I'll say, you know, collectively us, uh, in in bigger ways, right? And so be willing to ask the questions because no question is a dumb question. Um, you, you, Some of us may have to connect with a little bit of courage on that and have to be willing to be vulnerable, right? And step out a little bit. And, and remember, you know, that we all have great things to contribute. And so that means that someone sitting up from the other side of the table from you or in that group or in the office or the company that you're a part of also has great things to, to possibly lend to uh, the operations conversations and the workflows. And so if we're not asking great questions, we're not gonna be able to figure out and find out who knows what or who can connect us to what, right? Because that's the other thing. It's it's not always about being the resource. It's about being resourceful enough to connect with the resource as well. And so questions get us thinking, right? And so I think that in, in that, you know, we, we can cultivate not just curiosity for curiosity's sake, but curiosity for growing sake, right? Because nothing grows in a comfort zone. And so that's really the opposite of being curious. It's being, you know, um, you know, complacent or being okay, apathetic, and and not that we even want to not that we even realize it, right? Because I don't think any of us really truly want to be apathetic, but we get stuck in a comfort zone. So being naturally more curious is what's going to push us out of our comfort zone, right? Because the questions we ask reveal information, reveal opportunity, and that's what moves us out of the status quo, gets us thinking and gets us, you know, thinking logically and creatively and brings up new ideas. Um, so Get connected to that inner child, get connected to that, that curiosity that you've had since you were born, 
And, and really, like I said earlier, think about one area of your life that you would like to learn more about, or you would like to ask some questions. Start there, make that your focus for this week as an opportunity to cultivate your curiosity. Because keep in mind that developing mastery in, in, in something, right? Becoming an expert in something means that you are willing to dive into one topic or area and, and really create that knowledge base and go deep, right? We can't be the master of everything. So just find that one area that you really want to develop mastery in, that you want to develop more knowledge in, that you want to get curious about, you want to ask more questions about. And, and in doing so, starts to create opportunity, not just in that area of your life, but probably will transcend into other areas of your life, right? So get, get curious and get interested in something that's going to really uh, create an opportunity for you to thrive, not just survive. So I trust you found this to be uh, inspiring. I look forward to hearing from a lot of you as I do each week in uh, private messages and stuff on the Facebook page. So feel free to use that as your community. Uh, and so if you have found this to be inspiring, I would encourage you to share with other people. Continue to grow the Facebook page, which is Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs on Facebook. Um, you can find all of the previous Mojo sessions going back to May of 2020 on my YouTube channel. Um, and again, this is always, as always, it's a joy to start my week with you. So I encourage you to get curious and ask great questions. Have some fun around that and enjoy your week. And I will see you next Monday. Thanks again, everybody. Enjoy. Thank you, Anna. Thanks.